And now the Mickey Mouse Club presents The Hardy Boys. Featuring Tim Considine and Tommy Kirk. In the mystery of Ghost Farm. Today, an introduction. Oh, hi. I'm Frank Hardy. My brother's name is Joe, and this is where we live with my father and Aunt Gertrude. And, well, if you were around last year, or if you've ever read any of the Hardy Boy mystery books, then I guess you know all this stuff already, don't you? The important thing is, last year, Joe and I helped a nice old man find some pirate treasure. Remember? But this year, well, starting tomorrow, in fact, we're going to be mixed up in a brand new mystery. Everything will be new, even us. After all, we've been doing a whole year's worth of growing up. You call that growing up? <laughs> Ouch. No, I hit my head. <laughs> I just thought of something, Aunt Gertrude. I was blaming Bayport. Where it's not where you live that causes the trouble. The real, actual trouble in the world today is girls. I mean it. If you ever catch me wasting my time with a girl, you can shoot me. Joey! Joey, it's me, Ayala! Oh, Joe, I forgot to tell you. I promised Mrs. Morton that you'd go on an errand on your bike and keep Iola company. Come on. We can spend the whole afternoon together if you like. No! I mean, if you're not working on any old mysteries or something. No, no, no. Go home. Go away. Go home! Ah! That's Iola Morton. She's sort of like the measles when getting rid of her's concerned. But she and Joe ran into a mystery, all right. We called it the mystery of Ghost Farm. That farm was where it all started and where it all finished. A strange old place way out in the country. And for some reason, everybody got excited or mad or just plain jumpy the minute we began investigating. Oh, now, if you can snoop, I guess I can ask a few questions, can't I? After all, everybody's curious about a haunted house. About what? Haunted? That place? Well, it's, uh, empty. You know what I mean. <laughs> no, sir, you don't catch me snooping around funny old places like that. What were you doing in that house? W what house? Oh, now, nobody's going to hurt you. That's why I stopped. I saw you racing out of there as if you'd seen a ghost. Well, I mean, I wasn't really... Well, did you see anything in there? Did you? Everybody was curious. Everybody acted funny. But there were some other characters at that farm that looked like they needed our help. They tried to tell us about it, too. <laughs> The one that had the most to say wasn't always so friendly. His name was Billy, and if he could have talked, he could have told us the whole secret of the farm. In fact, that goat was almost the key to our whole mystery. But boy, what a chase he led us before we found it out. Here, Billy! He even got tangled up in a zoo one night. What a noisy place that turned out to be. I guess I've given you sort of the general idea of what our case is about. It was a little spooky sometimes. There were some pretty strange characters. And with all those animals and even a lion running around loose, well, you never knew exactly what was going to happen next. Hi there. Where'd you come from? Professional secret. Well, crawl back in the woodwork while I finish, will you? Well, this is supposed to be a mystery, isn't it? Well, give them some clues. About the ghost farm, you mean? Sure. Let them figure it out like we did. Let them guess what the real mystery was. Okay, just so they don't get too scared. 
Joe here saw the place first. It wasn't quite so empty as it looked. Spooky Farm wasn't the only thing that could make a guy nervous. But a good detective doesn't fool around. When a new situation comes along, he wades right in. No matter who the suspect is, he grills them with important questions. You like the way this model handles? Don't let him feed you that. He isn't even old enough to have a license. The trouble with brothers is they're always hanging around. But most of the time, we were sure glad to have each other's help because there wasn't any kidding about those animals being in trouble. And the closer we got to the real mystery of Ghost Farm, the more everybody tried to warn us away. As for helping the animals, well, finally we heard about a man named Fred. Well, uh, to get back to Fred now, <coughs> it's, it's like the time when our old walrus got sick and the vet was afraid he just wouldn't be able to help him. Well, that's when Fred came with the truck. You know what I mean? But, but that time I, I just didn't have the heart to. Oh, what's the good of a lot of old, broken down farm animals anyway? To those bankers like, like Binks, I mean. Of course, I, I got nothing to do with it anyway myself. They just asked me who to call, that's all. And I, I, I said, call Fred. There's a man named Fred. He'll do it. Do what? When old Fred hauls them off, he hauls them. He hauled them all right. For some mysterious reason, he tried to steal every animal on that farm. The only trouble was he got one critter too many. From there on, you can just imagine what kind of things happened. Now they ought to know what to watch for tomorrow. Don't let him kid you. It's a mystery. 
We can't let you in on everything, you know. You'll see for yourselves. The least we can do is clear up that ghost business so you won't be too afraid to watch. There just isn't any such thing as a ghost. The kids know that already. Well, that's what I meant. Anyway, they won't hurt you if at midnight you, you put salt on their tails and you wear a big string of garlic around your neck and... Listen. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> See you See tomorrow. tomorrow. Next episode, beginning of the puzzle. The trouble with Bayport is, well, it's not right on the bay and there's no port, really, and, well, we live here. What I mean is, well, some people can live in this small town, and, and it turns out to be Dodge City, or, or Valley Forge, or, or someplace in New Mexico where they shoot rockets to the moon. But not Bayport. Whenever it looks like there's gonna be some excitement around here, you know what it is? Yeah, and if it's not a cat, it's a a puppy that has to be rescued from a picket fence. I guess you get the idea, all right. Bayport is just no place for detectives. Joe? Joe, listen. Well? No, I guess not. Well, guess not what? What was it? Oh, nothing. In Bayport, even the newspapers are filled with nothing. Just a big, fat nothing. Just a bunch of murders, that's all. Old one. Unsolved. I guess there's no detective around brave enough to take the case. Oh, who cares, anyway? Hey, quit messing it up. It's only last week's movie ads. Movie ads. Well, what'd you think I was looking at? The society section? Huh. Here we are, the Hardy Boys. Professional investigators, almost. Why, I bet we could solve anything. <laughs> what happens in this burpy bayport? Nothing. This week, there's not even a mystery at the movies anymore. Hey, Frank? Hmm? You don't think there won't be any more mysteries for us to solve, do you? The what? I mean, that it's possible, seeing as how we live here, that, that all the mysteries will just be solved forever. All right, I know it's silly, but you don't even care. Me? Care what? Oh, look, why don't you go mow the lawn or something? Society column. Advice to the loved one. That's what you read. We can't all stay in the funny papers like you, Junior. Listen, that's what's wrong with us. We don't go out and find mysteries like we used to. Listen, if Dad didn't let us in on a case once in a while... Wait, Joe. Play those games someplace else, will you? That's all you ever think about anymore, is the, the clues and secret codes yeah, and we... mystery messages. Well, look, don't bother me. Well, who cares about... Oh, Frank! It might be your father. I'll get it anyway. Really? I'm sorry, Edgar. Nothing to get so excited about. Hello? Is it Dad, is it? Tell him not to be late for dinner, that's all. Listen, ask him if he's got a new case. Well, go on, ask him. Quiet, will you? I'll tell him I got the cleaning. He doesn't have to bother about that. Hello. Let me talk to him, will you? Dad, listen. International spies? Smugglers? The crown jewels? Is your father all right? It's nobody but a girl. Sure, Dolores. Now, can I have a little privacy? Listen, Romeo, you're out of for it. Just remember the phone bill, that's all. Hi. I don't know, for some reason, this house of ours is the noisiest place in the world. <laughs> no, you know, it's just my brother and his kid detective stuff. Yeah. Well, he'll get over it. Just listen to him. How can a guy change his spots like that? Do you realize what he was doing one year ago? Looking for Applegate's treasure, snooping like mad everywhere. I know. And how many cases has he had since then? How many times has he grabbed the phone right out of your hands? No. Frank Hardy here, confidential private eye. Big shot detective. I'm afraid he's just growing up, that's all. 
You call that growing up? <laughs> Ouch. No, I hit my head. I think you're just going to have to face it, Joe. There's not going to be any mystery today. Or any other day. Yeah. Not with him. Oh. I just thought of something, Aunt Gertrude. Well, sure. I was blaming Bayport. Where it's not where you live that causes the trouble. The real, actual trouble in the world today is girls. I mean it. If you ever catch me wasting my time with a girl, you can shoot me. Joey! Joey, it's me, I'm Alma. Oh, Joe, I forgot to tell you. I promised Mrs. Morton that you'd go on an errand on your bike and keep Iola company. Are you ready? It's only a few miles out in the country. You can carry the goat's milk if you like. It's for my baby sister. I'm sorry. Goat's what? Where? Come on. We can spend the whole afternoon together if you like. No! I mean, if you're not working on any old mysteries or something. No, no, no. Go home. Go away. Go home! <laughs> Not my fault, I'm a girl. All right, don't rub it in. What? Joe, watch out for the milk! Why don't they build Dairy's closer to town? Well, it's not my mother's fault she had a flat tire. She usually comes. I know it. Well, it's not my baby sister's fault, is it? If the doctor says she has to have goat's milk for a while? All right, we've already talked about it. We've got the goat's milk, so shut up, will you? I'm just trying to show you that it's nobody's fault. Hmm? So why can't you be nice to me? Oh, that does it. A guy gets mixed up with a bunch of females and... Oh, brother, I'm through. I quit. You what? I quit being a detective. Being me, I'm through. Joe! I mean it. I've been thinking about it and I've made up my mind. There's just no more use in it, that's all. Joe, you can't! Look out! Joe, let go! What's the matter with you? You want to get run over something? Wake up. All I said was that I'm through with being a detective and... Oh, 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 oh. Joe, are you all right? Joe, speak to me. Whose fault do you suppose that is? Well, it's only milk that so. Come on, Joe, please get up. Well, give me time. You don't have to shove me. Oh, women. I only thought you might be hurt, that's all. Well, I'm not hurt, but look at my bicycle. There's nothing so important that you have to be mean all the time. Do you realize how many miles we are from the dairy? And look at my wheel, and I haven't got my tools. All you care about is everything that happens to everything except me. Oh, well, well, please don't cry. Don't cry. I like my bicycle wheels bent. It makes me feel like I'm riding a horse. Oh, please don't cry. There, look. You see, it's a telephone booth. We can call Aunt Gertrude and she'll send out Frank in the car. Come on, let's go. No, she won't. Frank hasn't even got his driver's license. Or Aunt Gertrude will pick us up. Or if she won't, we can walk home and your father can get the goat's milk tonight. You haven't even got the money to call. Well, yes, I have. Look here. Just relax. There's nothing to worry about. Just take a minute. Well, Frank, really. The line's busy. Oh, no, I bet that guy's still... You bet what? Can't we wait? No, never mind. It could be ten years. Well, if anything else goes wrong today... Listen. Goat. Well, there's one, there has to be more. But you can't go milking everybody's goat. Well, of course not, stupid. But the farmer can. And if he'll sell us some, we'll, we'll come on. Well, of course. Oh, Joe, I knew there wasn't anything to get so mad about in the first place. Well, maybe the only time things go wrong is when you lose your temper over silly stuff like girls and your own brother. Oh, Joe, let's go find a goat or something. Nothing else to do. But you know something else? Frank and I aren't going to be detectives anymore. But, Joe... I mean it. From now on, there aren't going to be any more Hardy Boy mysteries. Sure 
is skinny. She wouldn't believe me. Frank. She did? Frank. <laughs> Has Joe come back yet? I saw her oldest mother at the store. She wanted to know. Wait a minute, Andy. I'll be through in a minute. Oh, now, really, Frank. You've been talking to Dolores for over an hour. This isn't Dolores. She hung up when I wanted to call Louise. And then after that, Sally had to call back naturally. Oh, naturally. Move, move. Never mind about Joe. Just think of the telephone bill. I owe and Joe are all right. You can't get into trouble going out to the country to get goat's milk. <laughs> They'll be home pretty soon. Anyway, what could a goat do to them? <laughs> They must live in back. Joe, I wouldn't mind doing it. Only your bike's still broken. And if we don't start for home pretty quick. Hey, Joe, wait for me. You're right about trespassing, Iowa. Kids shouldn't do it. Just different if you know what you're doing, like I do, that's all. And we can't be trespassing because we're just looking for the guy who lives here. There's nothing to worry about. It's as simple as that. Oh, come on. You're as jumpy as an old hen. Boy, you must think he runs this place. He sure isn't very friendly. Hey, Joe, we can go around the other side of the house and pick up our bikes and... Look. The door's open, that's all. Hey, anybody home? Joe, will you please stop that? Hello? Hello? Hey! Where are you? Listen. Maybe she needs to be milked or something. Look at him. even skinnier than she was. wonder where the farmer is, anyway. I bet he's way out in the field. Or in town shopping, maybe. Joe, we're just wasting time here. Listen. Must be a cat. 
Inside the house. Joe! Oh, isn't she sweet? Sure, you like them with their bones showing. Joseph Hardy, I'm warning you for the last time. Oh, be quiet. I just want to taste it, that's all. Fresh. It's fresh milk. Well, of course it's fresh. Did you ever catch any cat eating anything that wasn't fresh? But who put it here? I mean, if nobody ever comes in this place... I don't know, and I don't want to know. But this end of the house looks just as deserted as the other end. Wish Frank was here, he'd know what to do. You said you were all through with mysteries, and even if this was one... Mud! Might be a footprint. And it comes in the house, and it doesn't go out. Doesn't? I'm going home. No, wait. Hello? Where are you? Are you coming, or aren't you? Well, what if somebody's in trouble up there? I don't care. Goodbye. Good riddance. Hey, you. Stop. Now, you just wait there. I stopped. Well, don't you ever watch where you're going. Look there. You almost crashed right into me. I'm sorry. You... Oh, no, you don't. Well, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't make a bad mark, did I? Mark? Young lady, if I had you in a classroom, I'd say you were in danger of flunking. Oh, then you're nothing but a school teacher? Of course not. I'm an insurance man. Investments. It's none of your business what I am. What were you doing in that house? W what house? Oh, now, nobody's going to hurt you. That's why I stopped. I saw you racing out of there as if you'd seen a ghost. Well, I mean, I wasn't really... Well, did you see anything in there? Did you? Well, I, I didn't really go inside. I mean, we just took... I mean, I wasn't inside. We? Look here, that farm is closed up. You kids start snooping around there, and I'll have to... No, I mean, I just took my bike around there, and we saw a goat, if that's any help. Hmm? All right, all right, never mind. Just stay away from private property after this. Now, you tell your friends it's Mr. Binks who says so, hmm? Yes, sir, Mr. Binks. I'll tell them. Aren't you going home? Yes, sir. Kids. Just a minute. Now I gotta tell Dolores what Sally said. Well, surely there's something better for you to do than. Listen, Louise, will you wait a minute? What? But I'm not. Come back here. Oh, you. Frank. Frank, please. Listen, I thought I told you. Who? Oh, come on now. Get off the phone. Huh? Where? He is. Right, got it. Bye. What? Uh, Frank! Oh, uh, Iola says that Joe's had a little bit of bike trouble, that's all. So uh, I'm going to pick up some tools and go out and help him fix it. Uh, wait a minute, where is Joe? Oh, well, it's kind of hard to say exactly. I'll know more about it when I investigate a little more. I don't know much about it now. Investigate? Now, no, wait till you be back. And what if those girls start phoning again? Girls? Who cares about girls? Now we got a mystery to work on. A mystery? Oh, dear. Uh, Frank! But you still haven't told me about Joe!
on your hinges. Is there? Mm. Isn't anybody home? I don't want to go upstairs if you're not. And I don't want to keep making noise and walking around if... Well? Is there? Mud. Only it goes up and it doesn't come down. Oh, wow, am I stupid. Footprint. Sure, some guy just came in and went up and changed his muddy shoes, that's all. That's why it doesn't come down, or... or, or, or. Are you sure there's nobody up there? ideas about hunting rabbits around here, you better change your mind, that's all. Oh, no. I, I don't even have a gun. I was just... Is this your field here? Yep. And that's your house? <laughs> of course not. Think I'd live in a monkey zoo? Your field here is mine, that's all. So you keep out, even if the fences ain't posted. Oh, sure. What do you mean, zoo? Who lives over oh, there? Oh, that's old Squirrelhead Lacey's house, son. You quit asking questions, boy. I got work to do. Squirrelhead? Lacey? All right. Let's just let him rest in peace. Do what? Well, a fellow that used to live there has been dead the last month. That's all I meant. You better run along now. Dead? But I mean who lives there now? Whose place is that? Now? Well, good question. But I ain't gonna go finding out. <laughs> no, sir. You don't catch me snooping around funny old places like that. Shoes are in the closet. Somebody must have come in and changed and left them there and been gone for hours. So what am I looking for? Nobody's in trouble and somebody just changed their shoes. can a guy get? Snooping around like... Oh, who cares anyway? Who cares? <laughs> oh, nothing but ghosts in this place. Detective. Maybe you're right. 
Maybe you do run this way. Hey, what's going on here? Started this. What's wrong with your leg? Oh, you kind of like to be scratched, don't you? Well, you gotta be around here someplace. Is that you? Like you saw a ghost. Well, maybe I did. Like a scared rabbit. Look out, it's Fearless Frank. Oh, be quiet, will you? Ah, oh, there's nothing in there. It's just an old house. But Frank out there in that barn is the weirdest bunch of animals you ever saw. Some of them are sick and old, and one of them has a Wait, broken leg. wait. I tell you, I heard something up there. There's somebody upstairs. No, there isn't. I've been there. I tell you, I heard something. You didn't hear anything. What you heard were old creaky shutters and things. Frank, listen, you know what I did? I went through every single closet in that house. Really? Of course, really. I'm not timid like you are. All right, Jelly Belly. <laughs> All right, I'll show you. Except for an old cat, this whole place is empty. Nothing but an old... What's the matter? It's locked. guys better look out. Lucky I was slowing down. You almost got it. Sorry, mister. Come on, Joe. We didn't mean it. We were just running too fast, I guess. I'm sorry, too, mister. It's all right. No harm done. 
Well, don't look so scared. Just watch it next time, huh? We're not scared. Well, let's go, Frank. Hey, wait! What did scare you? Huh? Well, you said running. I thought you guys were just camping the road. I wasn't looking. It's not important. We said we're sorry, mister. Well, what happened? You sure nobody threw you off the place, did they? No. <laughs> well, I wouldn't expect so. Not off a place where nobody lives, where there isn't anybody anymore. Is there? We didn't see anything, and we didn't hear anything. We were just looking at some animals, that's all. Yeah, there's this poor little burro and this horse and... Come on, Joe. Goodbye, mister. Hey, slow down. What did happen over there? Nothing. We just want to get home so I can fix my bike. See, the wheel's bent. Well, it does look sort of mysterious, doesn't it? I mean, well, we saw these footprints, and the place looks deserted, so... Then all of a sudden, the, the back door was... was locked. Well, we're sure. Then, then we figured if we were disturbing somebody, we'd, we'd better be going home all the quicker. I guess that's more than you need to know anyway, isn't it? Oh, no. If you can snoop, I guess I can ask a few questions, can't I? After all, everybody's curious about a haunted house. About what? Haunted? That place? Well, it's uh, empty. You know what I mean. An uh, old man named uh, Lacey used to live there. He died about a month ago. Got caught up in a timber fire upstate. Yeah, we heard about him. Uh, we're sorry we, he's dead, but... You can believe in ghosts if you want to, mister. But we don't, that's all. Hey, now, wait a minute. Call me Eric. My name's Eric Burson. Well, goodbye, Eric. Wait a minute, Joe. Why are you so interested? And why do you call that house haunted? Well, it's just that there's not supposed to be anybody over there. So if you did see anybody in that house, it'd just about have to be a ghost, wouldn't it? But we didn't say we saw anybody. Huh? <laughs> well, if it was just some door being locked that bothered you boys, well, the doors are supposed to be locked. Are you sure? I mean, if there's nobody there. Of course I am. That's why they gave me this key here. It's supposed to fit the back door, I think. Yeah. You mean you bought the house? Lacey's farm is yours now? Well, not quite so fast. Matter of fact, who'd want it? Run down old shack, a few fields full of weeds, and I'm no farmer. Lacey was my cousin, that's all. Seems I'm the only relative they could find. Who's they? Oh, the banks. You know, courts, insurance people, all that. Then the place will be yours. You'll inherit Lacey's farm? Yeah, and the animals, too. You're going to have to take care of the animals. <laughs> well, Lacey wasn't much for writing things or leaving things on paper, but, well, yeah, I I guess they may end up by giving it all to me. Anyway, Mr. Bink said to take a look. So uh, now is it all right if I am curious about you, too? <laughs> well, I'm Joe Hardy, and this is my brother, Frank. Uh -huh. And why are you in such a hurry, huh? <laughs> well, we'll show you. <laughs> okay, you win. I guess maybe we can stand to a little more investigating. That's all we've been waiting to hear. Now we got a client. Client? Well, sure, didn't we tell you? Investigations are our real line. Haven't you ever seen our picture in the paper? Why, we've solved cases that'd make Sherlock Holmes' hair stand on its end. Now, wait a minute. You stay out of people's hair. I mean it, boys. I'll keep in touch with you. There's nothing to get excited about. Well, I guess I might be able to hire a couple of real detectives long enough to haul a few sacks of oats, huh? Say, uh, why don't you boys put your bikes back there, and then I'll just drop you off in town, okay? Okay, Eric. Great. You know something? This is a funny case. All we got to go on so far is a mysterious person who makes beds and feeds milk to cats. Yeah. Maybe put the bandage on the burro's leg. Sure doesn't want to be seen, though. All right, maybe it's a ghost at that. Frank! He's been here again. Where is he? Oh, it's got to be a ghost. Look at the bent wheel on my bike. Look, it's been straightened clean out.
A detective, huh? That's right. You work together on cases sometimes, do you? Oh, well, you turn here, Eric. It's shorter to our house this way. Now listen, a bicycle wheel couldn't just snap back by itself, could it? Maybe, I don't know. Oh, if it was bent like yours was? Of course not. So somebody had to do it for me while we were in the house. <laughs> Good Samaritan. Might have been somebody just passing by on the road. Would you do it? Would you stop and fix a bike you'd never even seen before? Well, there's nothing so unusual about somebody doing well, wait a, a minute. turn. If you couldn't even see the bike, how could you possibly see if the wheel was bent? So it must have been somebody special. Like our ghost? No, like somebody watching us. That's what he means. You better slow down. It's the next house. You know, boys, it's uh, still a pretty harmless thing to do, just fixing a bike wheel. Sure, so is making beds and all the other mysterious stuff out there. But it isn't harmless if the person wants to stay hidden all the time. And why? Why would anybody want to do it? Or a couple of anybody's. Or three or four, maybe. Nobody says there's only got to be one ghost, you know. Boys, this thing does look a little complicated. Maybe I shouldn't let you go back out there, not even to feed those animals. Mm -hmm. I'll see Mr. Binks again. Maybe that man of his, the zoo, can take the animals off our hands sooner than they planned. Oh, no, Eric. We heard you the first time. You're our client. Huh? Yeah, never mind about that zoo stuff. I know Mr. Bray, the caretaker out there. Hey, George, knock it off! Is he hungry or something? Ah, emotionally disturbed. Real up-to-date lion there. Say, did I ever tell you about Don't let him kid you. That lion, George, has been here for 50 years. Mr. Bray, the real reason we came here was to... Oh, pig feathers. Joey, this brother of yours here keeps coming out here asking questions all the time for his homework. But his head's too soft. None of the answers stick. Well, this isn't for school. It's and just... now George there, he got himself a real guilt complex. You know what that is? Well, Mr. Bray. Real bad feeling down in his heart. Now, some people call it heartburn. Really? Yeah, but uh, uh, a lion can get it just from swallowing a broom. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Swallowed a broom whole. Stick, bristles and all. If you don't believe me, take a look at the tail he cleans out his cage with. But, of course, what you want to hear about is why he feels so guilty about it. No, we don't. And I'm glad you asked me, because it's really quite simple. Laziness, that's why. Letting somebody else do all that work, swishing his tail for him. Do what? Oh, didn't I mention? That broom ain't all he swallowed. No, I was sweeping at the time, and Plum forgot to let go of the, the other end. Ever hear about biting the hand that feeds you? You should see the way he kills the five-year-olds with that stuff. All right, go home. I've answered all your silly questions about what to feed a burro and a goat and all the rest, and now I gotta tend to my own critter. But you haven't answered the main thing yet. Just Mr. Binks told Eric that the, the zoo was planning to do something with these animals later on. Well, not the zoo itself, but some guy named Fred or something who works here sometimes. Isn't that right, Mr. Bray? Oh, uh... Oh, there, you, you hear that? They're calling me names. Three times late today. All right, hold the phone. At ease. We only want to find out what's going to happen to the Lacey Farm. Because what if our client does inherit the place? Well, look, couldn't we talk to this Fred? I mean, well, what is he going to do with all those animals? Now, that ain't your mystery, is it? Oh, who cares about a bunch of broken-down old 
farm critters anyhow. Well, how do you know they're broken down? Hmm? How do you know they're broken down? Oh, boys, feeding them a day or two, that's one thing. But a man wants a real hobby, a place where he can really learn things about animals. You take the wild ones. Come out here and help me, maybe. You know, we got a leopard here, even's gonna have kittens. Didn't I tell you that, Frank? No. You don't understand anything. What we're trying to find out is... <coughs> I gotta get going. Say, I'll bet I never told you about the elephant and the vacuum cleaner salesman either. Well, you just come around tomorrow and I'll do it. Or, or the time that seal there started swallowing his own swimming pool. Yeah, and I'll bet you haven't given us one straight answer today. Uh, yeah, how come you want to get rid of us so bad? Go on, make up one of your wild stories. Then yeah, now listen here, you. All right, then tell us about Fred. Uh, Fred. Yeah, well... Well, all right, if you gotta grow up and face the facts of life, or something else. Uh, well, there's this man named Fred. Well, well, he don't really work here, but he's got a truck, see? And whenever he... Well, I don't know too much about the Lacey farm, but there's a clerk from the court asking questions and a nosy pickle puss named Binks, too. Yeah, I'll go on. Well, to, to get back to Fred now, <laughs> it's like the time when our old walrus got sick and then that was afraid he just wouldn't be able to help him. Well, that's when Fred came with the truck. You know what I mean? But, but that time I, I just didn't have the heart to Oh, what's the good of a lot of old, uh, broken down farm animals anyway? To those bankers, like, like Binks, I mean. Of course, I, I got nothing to do with it anyway myself. They just asked me who to call, that's all. And I, I, I said, call Fred. There's a man named Fred. Uh, he'll do it. Do what? Well, it's, it's like when you got a horse with a broken leg and and he's got to be shot, but you just can't do it. Then you call Fred? Mm -hmm. Got to be somebody to put him away. That's how the world is. And uh, sometimes it's kinder to the animals, too, when there's nobody left to, to look out for them. Uh, what I mean is, why do you kids have to get mixed up with those critters in the first place? Somebody's got it all decided. I tell you, Fred has already been called. Hey, Joe, where are you? Come back here and help me with this stuff, will you? Hey, Frank, look at this. Almost knows you already, doesn't she? Frank, listen. Nobody can just go hauling away a bunch of animals and have them killed like they were, were ants or something, can they? Yes, they can, if they legally own them. But what if somebody else wants a burrow? I mean, that Mr. Binks and everybody just can't go sending around a hearse and... I don't know who'd want him. Wow, he must be 90. They make glue out of old horses, don't they? Shut up, will you? It's not just him. There's those mangy old sheep and the cow. And there must be others outside. I saw those skinny old pigs. Well, don't forget the goat. Uncle Billy's Billy. Yeah, even him. We've got to do something. We've got to, got to figure this out and do something. Do what? We haven't even figured out the ghost yet. We don't even know for sure who owns this farm or who's the legal anything, let alone what we could do about this. Shh. What was it, Joe? Somebody at the house? No, coming in off the road. Frank, he's gonna turn here. Oh, can you see? No, it's just a, a man with a truck. A man named Fred? Well, hurry up and close the door. 
I can't. It's stuck. Oh, what are we going to do? Well, don't let him see us. Oh, what? A man with a truck, he said, remember? What are you kids doing here? Is your name Fred? Huh? I mean, cause if it is, you've got no right to take these animals. Now, they don't need to be killed, and you know it. Wait a minute, Joe. I mean, well, couldn't we talk this over or something? Hold on there, son. Just a minute. Take it easy. I'm Sam. But that don't mean you can relax any. Hey, aren't you the farmer I met yesterday? Yeah. Kicked you out of that section once, didn't I? Guess I didn't make it stick good enough. Private property, boys. Guy named Binks catches you around here, he'll string you up on a pole. Well, why? I mean, why does everybody talk about him? He's just a banker or something. He doesn't own this place. Oh, pretty smart, ain't you? Well, Binks owns most everything else around here. Used to pay insurance and taxes on his farm when Lacey couldn't manage. That's good enough for me. It's all right for us to be here, mister. We know somebody who said it's okay. Oh, is that so? What's that for? Horse and burrow. Get out of the way there. Oh, are you the one that's supposed to be feeding all the animals? Well, what do you think I do this for, a hobby? Well, you haven't done a very good job of it. Some of these animals are almost starving to death. You know, what's a big idea? Cut it out! <laughs> <laughs> well, guess that'll teach you some manners, huh? We came here to feed the animals ourselves, mister. And we're not the only ones who think they look bad. Everybody who sees them... All right, all right. Well, they're headed for the boneyard anyway. Feed's expensive these days. Yeah, besides, most of them look stove in just because they're old. Yeah, but don't you worry. I get over when I can. Well, why do they have to go to the boneyard? <laughs> yeah, you don't like that much, do you, son? Well, I'll tell you. These critters are either lame or something anyway. Silly Lacey lived here, he just couldn't stand and see things die. So whenever there was an animal in trouble anywhere, why, he'd just say, bring him on over, and he'd take care of him. It doesn't sound so silly to me. <laughs> no, but you gotta be sensible about life. Lacey ended up running a hotel for the critters. Went broke. Lost all his money and the farm, too. Now Lacey's dead, and nobody's gonna benefit or be happy. <laughs> Even him. We named him Grandpa. <laughs> Say, mister, did you give the cat some fresh milk today? Huh? Cat? What cat? Well, never mind. It's, it's not important. Well, are there cats hanging around here or something? Or you mean in the house, maybe? Well, maybe you can tell us what's wrong with this burro's leg. Well, let's take a look. Uh, banged a tendon or something. And a tight bandage on it like this for some time. We call her beautiful. <laughs> well, I don't blame you. Got a right glamorous face there. In fact, if her legs weren't so flimsy, I... What's the matter? Why didn't you boys say you brought some fresh hay? Well, we didn't. We just brought a couple of sacks of oats. And why? What's the matter? Why, these animals ain't hungry. Look at the cow there. She's awful bony. Well, she's built that way. Look at her belly. Why, if she'd eat any more, she'd bloat. And those sheep out there. Let's take a look. What's this about the horse and the burrow? Shh, wait. Maybe they need a little grazing. Alfalfa I left here last week's all gone. That slot for the pigs is fresh. Somebody's sure been here since me. <laughs> what goes on in this silly place, anyway? Somebody you tell us. <laughs> well, I bet at least he ain't been fed. Meanest goat in six counties. <laughs> Did 
together. The meanest goat in six counties. You hear it? Well, maybe a lot of people feel sorry for the animals, so they stop by all the time. <laughs> well, the uh, world's full of busybodies, that's a fact. But take my advice and go home. It's gonna be dark pretty quick. Hey, mister, <clears throat> why were you so curious about her a minute ago? Why'd you look at her leg so funny? Huh? Oh, fresh bandage you guys put on her there. We what? For a second, I thought that might have been kind of fishy, and then I remembered that's what you were doing when I drove up, wasn't it? Put a bandage? Because you didn't even get it tied right here. Otherwise, pretty good job. There we go. Well, that's what you were doing, wasn't it? Uh, no. Uh, yeah. We sure didn't get it tied right. Well, I, I guess we didn't tie you right, did we, beautiful? Boys, go home and get your supper. And forget her for good. Because you want to know the truth? I just come here to feed that old horse because he used to be mine once. I wouldn't even waste hay on any of the others. As long as he's got some, I'm not going to waste any on him. You were right in the first place. There's a man named Fred coming to haul them all away. I checked with Mr. Binks. So Fred will bring his truck around the first thing in the morning. Bye. First thing in the morning. You know something, Joe? If that bandage on the burrow wasn't tied, then when we got here, we must have interrupted whoever was doing it. That's what I was gonna say, only so what? They're gonna haul him away tomorrow morning. Well, it's, it's just that the ghost or whoever it is might be around here. You know, right close. Yeah. But still so what? These animals are our real clients. You know that, don't you? I'm sure, until tomorrow morning. There was some way we could solve. We could save the animals and solve the mystery of this place, too. You know what I think? This guy, Mr. Binks, I'll bet he's at the bottom of everything. Why him? Well, listen, Joe. Binks is the guy who must have kept Eric from inheriting this place. He's the one who wants all the animals killed. Well, so what? Even if you're right, we haven't got time to go looking around or, or trying to change his mind for him. Tomorrow morning, Frank. Yeah, I know. We've got to have arguments. We've got to know something or find out something so we can go to Dad or the police, maybe. Get this execution stopped. We need help. We need facts. Frank! You know what kind of help we need? Huh? Come on, let's carry these sacks of oats into the barn before we go home. Hurry up, I got an idea. Oh, no! What are you doing with those skates on? But you told me to answer the phone. Oh, well, I didn't mean with those on. Well, I lost my skate key. I couldn't take them off. Uh, I owe a piece. I'll just run along home, will you? But there wasn't time to unlace my shoes. Oh, well, there? they'll just have to eat their dinner when they get here. here. It's getting so late now. Hello? What? It's, it's me, I said. Frank. Well, 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 what on earth? Listen, Annie, we're not very hungry tonight. What? Well, what I mean is, we just can't come home for supper until later. about. 
just trying to save you from the boneyard, that's all. We're gonna set us a trap. We're gonna catch us a ghost. I, I don't understand this at all. Why do you have to stay out there? Yes, why do they? I own us. What? Well, why do they? Aren't they coming back at all tonight? Iola, please. Aunt Gertrude, for the last time, we have something to do. And it's a matter of life and death. Oh, no, 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 not our life or death. At least I don't think there's any danger. Is Joe in trouble again? Is he injured? Uh, Frank Hardy, you start all over again and tell me from the beginning and don't leave so many things out. Aunt Gertrude, I can't tell you our whole case. I already explained. But never mind. I want to know why it is that you have to miss your supper. And if you're not home before your father gets home, and I have to tell him that I have no idea what it is that you're up to now. Aunt Gertrude, the main reason I can't tell you anymore is because I don't have any more dime. What, well, didn't you hear the operator when she... Well, I heard her. Oh, women, I never understand anything. Clumsy, scare yourself? Who's scared? What'd you yell for? What'd you yell for? Make me fall. What's this? More bandage. Found it up there. Well, so we won't have to loosen the old bandage and maybe hurt her. Give it here. Hope this idea works. Sure, a crazy way to catch a ghost. How would you catch one? In a bucket? All right, relax. Just stand still, beautiful. Just gonna tie some bandage around here so it doesn't drag, that's all. Hope you don't mind being ghost bait. Who knows, this might even work. If it doesn't work, beautiful, we'll be dead tomorrow morning. So will all the animals. They'll haul them away and... Sure, I know. I heard the guy. If only there was some way we could catch the ghost. Then maybe we could prove there was something mysterious and fishy going on. Maybe make the police make everybody wait. Maybe even fix it so the animals would never have to be killed. Sure, reprieve. Only, who's going to take care of the animals when... What's the matter? Door blew open. Hey, Joe. It's getting pretty dark. We better be getting home. Okay, she's all set. Listen, are you sure that there's nobody right in here watching us? One thing for sure, he must be a nice ghost. He's always around when something needs to be done, like, like when the cat needs milk or, or the bed needs to be made or my bicycle wheel needs fixing. Well, this sure looks like it needs fixing, all right. Frank, listen, the ghost is bound to see her and so come back to fix it. So if we just keep our eyes on her, and then maybe we can see who it is or, or he or her or whoever it is. Now, what's the matter? Listen, I'm with you, all right. It's just that, well, catching isn't always keeping, you know. Hmm? I mean, if we really do start tangling with this ghost, I hope it knows how nice it's supposed to be. Well, here goes nothing. Give her a slap after I get outside. Hurry it up, Joe. We gotta go home. Hey, does the light work on your bicycle? 
Joe, where are you? Shut the door before any of the animals get out. Sorry, beautiful. <laughs> with a bicycle pump? I told you to shut the door. Which way'd she go? How do I know? Come on, we're late already. That's a girl with a with a bad leg. Didn't it look like her bandage was coming loose? Look, we can't do anything about it now. Oh, it won't hurt anything if she stays out all night. I don't see her any place. <laughs> I'm gonna skip it. Let's go home. Yeah, we better go. I guess this is far enough. We can cut across the field and through the trees. What's this? Caught a fish, huh? <laughs> Let's see. Well, 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 so that's how it is, huh? Mm -hmm. It's a trap. That's what it is. Trap for a ghost, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, but quit stopping so much, will ya? We better get around where we can see her. That last bray was minutes ago. Maybe she's walking around the house again. Yeah, but if we don't keep watching her... Hey, what was that? over by the back door. Yeah, yeah, I can see something moving. Hey, wait. We haven't checked that door since we came back. So it could be unlocked now, I, I guess. Look, it's the burrow that's doing it. I can see your bandage. Oh, no. We sure haven't got anything so far. Maybe the ghost is inside the house. Sure, and even if he isn't, he's... Sure to hear us knocking around inside and come to see what's happening. If we could just get in there first and hide. Well, come on, now that we got the chance. There's nobody out there, so nobody saw us. Yeah, we're in luck. Maybe we can hide upstairs. Didn't I say it was gonna work? Didn't I? Frank, I told you to cut it out. upside down. Now I have caught you. <laughs> oh yes, boys. I've caught you all right. 
You and your little traps. What's that? What's that? Who's trap? Who's trap, you say? <laughs> Who, who are you? That's a good question, isn't it? Well, suppose we go inside and talk about that, huh? Well, what's wrong with right here? Oh, but uh, he belongs outside, not us. Uh, we belong inside. Isn't that right? I guess so. Oh, I only want you to be comfortable. Oh, I like everyone to be comfortable. Don't you? Well, sure, but... Well, then why don't we go inside? Well, might as well, I guess. That's what I was going to say. Well, look out for the goat! Stop him, one try it. Don't stop him. Uh, better get this door shut. Hey. Now, look, mister. Because Oof. if I could be watching for you and you could be watching for me, then all sorts of people could be out there watching for both of us. Couldn't they? And lock it, I think. There. See? You boys are not afraid of the dark, are you? No, of course you're not. Not big boys like you. Oh, no, of course not. No, no, that's only for two-legged fools. Animals, they know better. They know how friendly and safe the dark can be. Did you notice that before? You mean this thing on the wall here? Take care of all of God's creatures, and they will take care of you. Shut the blind. Hurry, hurry. Listen, mister. What's the matter with you? How come you're so anxious not to be seen? Huh? Because I, I'm not supposed to be here, naturally. Well, why not? Yeah, why aren't you? Why? Boys, uh, because I'm the ghost. <laughs> There's no such thing as a ghost. No, 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 of course not. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, and we haven't got time for that kind of stuff. Now, really, who are you? And what are you doing here? Well, I'm afraid you still better just uh, call me a ghost if you don't mind. Oh, but for Pete's sake, don't tell anyone you've seen me here. It's against the law, isn't it? Breaking into a house and living there like, like I've done for the past couple of days. Yeah, I guess it is. But that's what you've been doing. You asked me if I saw that thing before. How did you know I've ever been in this room? What? Uh, you fixed the wheel on my bicycle, too, didn't you? Yeah, and somebody put out fresh mash for the pigs. Yes, me, me, me. I did it. Yes, I did everything. Oh, I'm not trying to hide anything from you, boys. Why, why should I? And I'm even sorry I, I acted like a ghost. But, uh, well, under the circumstances, you see, I've been up north, you understand, and for years, well, all his life, I've, I've been as close to the man who used to own this house, uh, to Lacey, as anyone could be. Yeah, yeah, rest his soul. I bet you feel sorry now that he's dead, don't you? No, no, no. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Oh, it's a sad, sad thing to think about. What do you keep looking at that thing for? I mean, did Lacey write it or something? No, no, no. No, uh, as a matter of fact, he, even Lacey wasn't quite sure what it meant. His brother left it here. One they used to call old Uncle Billy. <laughs> Years back. Uh, Lacey always figured there was some mystery in it, too. Uh, old Uncle Billy, he'd poke at the words in the wall and, and cackle like a banshee. Yeah, but he died too sudden to even tell his own brother why. Yeah. Years back. Years back, that was. Well, what's that got to do with what's happening now? I mean, sure, there's some mystery out here, only... That's what you're going to tell me. Why do you think I caught you? Take care of all of God's creatures. That's what Lacey did all his life, and he figured when he died, the next person here would do the same thing, too, maybe. But here I come visiting and find something's gone wrong. Animals, wandering loose animals, hungry. Uh, Oh, Lacey wouldn't like this. Oh, mister, wait a minute. No, now you wait. You've been talking to people. Why is this man Fred coming tomorrow morning? Who's trying to get rid of all those poor animals out there? Tell me. But we don't know. Boys, you must know. The man named Fred's coming tomorrow morning. <laughs> What's 
going to happen to them? Well, maybe you can't help us, but there must be something that we can still do. Oh, how can I help when I can't even let myself be seen? No, it's up to you boys. I'm just a trespasser. I, I... Coffee can. Yeah, coffee can, that's it. Huh? Did you say coffee can? Of course, of course. Now, why didn't I think of looking there before? If only in Lacey's effect somewhere, a letter perhaps, or... What are you talking about? Well, uh, people like Lacey and his brother, too, before him, they never bothered to put things in desks, you know. Now, let me see, uh, I should remember where it was. You mean there's something hidden around here? I know Lacey didn't have any money, darn it, but... You know, I don't understand how any letters are gonna help the animals. Well, come on, let's look. No, no, wait, boys, wait, wait, wait. Uh, you better meet me outside, eh? Well, why? Why? Well, well, because if anyone is going to get into trouble for poking around here, huh, might as well be me, hadn't it? <laughs> yeah, you... Well, get along, boys. Get along. I'll be out in a moment. Here. You don't have to shove us. We can walk out I'm just trying feet. to help, that's all. You want me to help, don't you? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> All right, boys. Yes, yes. What kind of a guy is it that's nice to you one minute and then shoves you out the next? Shh. There's something out there. Out in the front, maybe. Oh, huh. Oh, well. Well, I saw the light on in there through the shade, and I didn't know what was wrong. Light? Oh, yeah, the lamp. Oh, I, I guess it's uh, still on. Hey, now, see here, boys. I, I stopped by your house. I got to thinking about, well, maybe I might be getting you two into trouble with all this detective nonsense, and I'm afraid your aunt's a little worried, too. Well, anyway, there isn't anything you can do out here tonight that can't... Hey, boys. There's nobody else in there, is there? Oh, oh. Uh, no, nobody but the ghost. <laughs> Eric, wait a minute. Right here. Now wait for me. You see him? I guess not. He must have ducked upstairs. No. I'm sorry. There for a minute, I thought you boys were kidding me. The place is empty, all right. I'm afraid I promised your aunt we'd hurry home, so let's go now, huh? Oh, hey, what about that light? Oh, oh I'll, I'll get, get it. it. Uh, so you saw Aunt Gertrude, huh? Yeah. Well, how did she look? What are you doing here? Most people don't see ghosts anyway, do they? <laughs> Here, take this quickly. What is it? I found it in the coffee can. Show it to Eric. Show it to anyone. It's in Lacey's own handwriting, too. I'm sure it must be quite genuine. Hey, Joe, hurry up! Is this something Lacey had hidden around here? Of course, of course. It tells how he wanted the animals cared for. Now hurry, hurry, show it to someone. Quickly. Well, sure, sure, but... It must be genuine. It must be. Why, it's like a will. Yes, that's it. Now everything's changed. Now we found Lacey's will. Wow! <laughs> Better hope it works, that's all. 
remember. You've still just got until tomorrow morning, you know. Shh. Be quiet. Listen. Yahoo! Frank, I found the will! Yahoo! Come on, Eric, let's go. Will? What are you talking about? Never mind, getting back. We've huh? got it. The will. Come on, Eric, let's get back to town as fast as we can. Yeah, we gotta stop by the main road, though, and pick up our bikes where we left them. Yeah, wait, let me see that. We'll read it to you. Come on, Eric, hurry. So you found it in the coffee can, huh? Well, I'm not driving any place until you guys tell me where you found this. Hey, to you. Huh? You're gonna take care of the animals, it says. Yeah, my twice-removed cousin Eric can use whatever few dollars there is in my insurance. Listen, we'll read it to you while you drive, please. <laughs> okay, but don't get so excited. Now, maybe it's not a legal will anyway. Huh? What? Well, it might help matters, only... Well, just tell me what you meant by coffee can. Where'd you find this thing anyway? You only went back in the house for a minute and out you come with it. Now, boys, I'm not leaving here until you explain how on earth you... Listen, Eric, you hired us as your detectives, right? Well, I only sort yes, of... you did. Yeah, and, and a detective doesn't have to reveal his sources of information, does he? And there are ethics like he doesn't even have to tell his client all he knows, does but he? But I wouldn't exactly say he's going to keep him in the dark completely either. All right, well, this is just one of those times, and you'll have to trust us, that's all. Now, oh, boys... Eric, uh... we just can't tell you where we found it. It's genuine, all right, it's... It's something that Lacey really wrote a long time ago, and he left in his house to be found later, I guess. That's all. <laughs> okay, I'll drive and you read. Only well, start from the beginning this time, will you? All right, boys, now slow down. Take it easy, huh? Yes, for heaven's sakes, give him time to think. You two came pouncing in here on him before he had time to even get up the front steps. A coffee cup? Come, oh, please. Oh, come on, Annie. We gotta find out what Dad thinks before we go to see Mr. Binks. Oh, I'm glad I got rid of Viola Morton before you two came back here. That's all I can say. Hey, look out. Oh. You know, Annie, things wouldn't be so gallopy if you weren't always shoving food in front of people. Oh, is that so? This is what she wants. You read it, Gertrude. See what you think. Oh, thank you. Well, Dad? Oh, wait. I'll go see how Eric's doing with the phone call. I said wait. Um, uh, to whom it may concern. Uh, well, that sounds legal enough, don't you think, Benton? Aunt Gertrude, please. These are my last wishes in case I shall die. I want the animals saved. All the animals on my farm. So if my twice-removed cousin Eric can use whatever few dollars there is in my insurance to see that they get fed right for the rest of their lives, then maybe he wouldn't mind if I leave him the farm. That's my wishes. Lacey, and that's all there is? We already told you. Well, what I don't understand is, why does Mr. Lacey say maybe Eric wouldn't mind if he made him his heir and left him the farm? Well, I think I can tell you that. Hey! Did you talk to Mr. Binks yet? Yeah, what did he say? Well, I'm afraid, on the telephone at least, Mr. Binks doesn't sound very friendly. I heard his name before. Pretty tough to deal with if I'm thinking of the right man. You are. I barely told him what we wanted. Well, the boys found Lacey's will, and we wanted to come over right away so we could do something about those animals before morning, when he snorted like a bull and said he was on his way out for the evening and good night. He can't do that. He's just got to talk to us. So he's coming over here instead. Huh? <laughs> yep. Happy or not, he'll be here in less than five minutes. That's great. Terrific. Now, tell me this. This is something I don't understand. Well, the whole thing is really pretty simple. The farm out there is worth so little, I guess Lacey figured I wouldn't want it. But with the insurance to help pay the back taxes, I suppose I could manage to keep things going, for the animals at least. Well, Mr. Binks will know more about that. You want some coffee before he gets here? Well... Oh, I'll get it for you. Oh, thanks. I'll come out with you. Uh, Mr. Burson, uh, why didn't the court give you the farm right away? Uh, after Mr. Lacey's death, that is. Well, I really don't know. Oh. Well, maybe uh, somebody interfered, or uh, maybe they've just been slow about it. I'm only a second cousin, you see, and uh, they might be looking for other relatives. You know something? Every single time we get a mystery, Dad steps in and takes all the action. You know what I mean? Yeah. Only it might not be so this time. Who cares about the legal stuff? I mean, we did all the work. If the rest of it's talking from here on, who cares? 
Sure. And we're still gonna grill that guy Binks and find out why he wanted to get the animals killed so bad. Yeah, and I'll bet he squirms, too. Because now we can stop him. You know something? It's been fun working together on a mystery again, hasn't it? Well, sure. Yeah, now that we're winning. Uh, I don't mean that. Well, I mean, we're not fighting so much, and you're not always gabbing to girls. Hey, now listen. I'm still a better detective than you are any day. And when it comes to being on the beam... Here he is. What's your name, Mr. Binks? Mr. Binks? Because my name is Joe Hardy, and this is Frank Hardy. And we're the ones every person calls you about the will. And... I know, I know. I'll just talk to him and your father, thank you. I just haven't got the time tonight to jabber with you children. Mr. Banks? Yes. Come in, Mr. Banks. Come on, let's get him back in the house before he... Wait. Hi. Oh, hello. Frank, please. You like the way this model handles? Oh, it's all right. But it's not as nice as my mother's car in traffic, though. But I guess you just can't beat those sport cars, can you? No, I guess not. Oh, you got a mark here in your front tire where you hit the curb. Oh, really? Frank, come on. It's not a bad mark. I guess girls like you need lots of practice before you can drive a big car like this. Oh, is that so? Don't let him feed you that. He isn't even old enough to have a license. <laughs> Neither am I. But my father got a permit to give me lessons. This is the first time we've been out. Gosh, he's been promising for months. I didn't make too bad of a mark on the tire, did I? Is, is your father Mr. Binks? Well, of course. All right. All right, seems all right to me. You come to my office in the morning and I'll go see the probate judge with you, Eric. It's not a regular will, of course. At least he didn't leave any other. That's been the trouble. He didn't even have a living beneficiary named in his insurance policy. Is that the insurance mentioned in here? Oh, yes. And it'll all go to you now. Just about enough insurance money to pay Lacey's back taxes on the farm, I'd say. In other words, young man, there won't be much left to stick in your pocket. Unless, of course, old Uncle Billy left things we don't know about. Well, just so he didn't leave any debts, that's all. <laughs> and the animals will be cared for. <laughs> yeah, that's the important thing. Oh, just one thing, Mr. Binks. How does it happen you're so mixed up in all this? Good question. I own property out that way. Carried a mortgage and insurance for Lacey once. Paid his taxes sometime. State owes me money. I just want to get things settled, that's all. Been helping the court, but uh, if he wants to take over, that's all right with me. Good riddance. Good night. Mr. Binks, Dad, what's going to happen to the animals? Aren't you going to ask them? Don't worry. We'll call that man Fred and cancel the order for him to come after him. Nobody's going to hurt your animals. Good night. Yeah, but why were you so anxious to have him killed in the first place? We've got an awful lot of questions to ask you. Joe, never mind, Sonny. It wasn't me personally, just that court order thing. Business is business. But look, I, I, I never asked you where you found that will, did I? Oh, wow. But then who cares where you found it? That's what I mean. So long as it's genuine. I'm sure they'll find out it is when the court checks the handwriting tomorrow. <laughs> ah, I don't think that anybody would make a phony document with purple ink. How about that, Hardy? Huh? Oh, it's scarcely. What? So stop asking questions. Who cares? It's all over and done with. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. I've got to go out and get my car wrecked now. Well, that's it, boys. Your case is all over but the shouting. Come on inside. I think this calls for a celebration. Ah, so do I. Hey, he wasn't such a bad guy after all, was he? Frank, listen. What if it isn't all over? Suppose the will doesn't save the animals. What if the whole thing is as crooked as... Relax, will you? That guy Binks is sure no crook. you never seen a villain with a daughter, have you? At least not one like her. Yeah, but listen, what about the farmer and us? I mean, maybe we're the real villains. When they check Lacey's handwriting in the morning... Hey, what are you talking about? You don't think there's anything wrong with that will, do you? I don't know, Frank. I just know I lost my fountain pen out there somewhere. 
Huh? And it was loaded with the same purple ink. I would be now. I was just calling Joe. Mm -hmm. So I got it. Can he come out now? What happened last night? I was so anxious to find out I ate my breakfast coming over here. So if he's still asleep, you can wake him up and... It's still on your face. And he's not here. Huh? What is? Oh! I heard the boys come downstairs over an hour ago. What happened? Why isn't he here? Well, they went out to the farm again on their bikes. Guess they wanted to be there before the roosters started crowing. <laughs> why? I mean, why'd they start so early? I don't know. Last night, it seemed as if the mystery was all solved. They found an old will that seemed to fix everything and save the animals. They did? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get on my bike and start out there right away. You know, there's only one thing that worries me. Joe didn't even take a donut. Huh? And I counted the eggs. I don't think either one of those boys had any breakfast. Gee, Joe always eats. Yes, I know. Before everything. And Frank, too, but not this morning. Something must be wrong, Iola. Very, very wrong. Frank? What time do you suppose I'll check the will, anyway? Who knows? Who cares? You don't suppose there's some kind of a law against a fraud like that, do you? I mean, even if the will does turn out to be phony. Look, will you quit hanging yourself until we know the truth? Hanging me? Wait till we get there, stupid. Just because it was my fountain pen. You know, you, you could have lost your pen on the couch back home. I mean, maybe we're getting scared for nothing at all. Yeah. Maybe all that purple ink stuff is just a big coincidence. Maybe thousands of old farmers write their wills with it. Oh, yeah. I mean, don't worry, I already looked in the couch. My pen wasn't there. I know it. I looked, too. His little friend is back where he belongs. Yeah. Hey, the barn door's open. Hi, beautiful. What's the noise for? She just likes to be scratched, that's all. Kind of like a dog. You know, I just gotta work out, Frank. Just gotta. Yeah, I know. Will or no will. See him? No, well, there's no ghosts in here. Yeah, I don't see any sheep either. And look, the cow's not in her stall like she was last night either. Well, she wasn't tied there, you know. Hey, Frank, what's happening? Frank! There she is. Just wandered out to graze, that's all. Hey, maybe the ghost hasn't even been here this morning. Will you quit calling him that? Why? Is he liable to hear me and start acting like one? Yeah, maybe he might. This is a great day for the ghost to start pulling his disappearing act. Yeah. Hey, mister, wake up! And we need you. Where are you? Hey, answer us! Fresh milk again, Frank. Maybe... Relax, will you? We'll find him. Hey! Look around down here. I'll look upstairs. You see him? Uh uh. last night just before he found it, remember? It's the same purple ink. Looks like somebody wiped a pen off on it. But it doesn't prove it. You know how my pen leaks. Look here. Hey, 
Last will. These are my last wishes. False start, that's all. He messed it up, so he tore it up and threw it away. Gets me as, how can a guy figure to get away with such a stupid stunt like this? Come on, he's out with the sheep. Where? Across the field by the road. When he saw me, he started to run. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Uh, back home. Oh, will you stay away? Oh. Shoo. Uh, take care of all of God's creatures and they will take care of you. Oh, you'll take care of me, all right. Make the whole world see where I am. Maybe those boys are not watching anymore, huh? Goodbye. Goodbye. forgot. Uh, you don't think I'd run away with it, do you? I don't know what you do, mister. Oh, no, please. <laughs> you mustn't think bad things about me. <laughs> you don't like to think bad things about people, do you? Ah, oh, come off it, mister. You know what you did with this pen, all right. Uh, I, uh, I was about to leave town, but, uh, oh, I'd have mailed it back to you. <laughs> you wouldn't even have seen me if I hadn't wasted time bringing those four sheep out to graze. Will of Lacey's you claimed you found in a coffee can. You wrote it last night with this, didn't you? I... I, I well, uh, why? What's the big idea of it? No, 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 wait, boys, wait. Let me explain. I I just didn't want to see those poor sheep getting hauled off and killed. Do you, huh? Well, well, do you? Well, of course not, but... I didn't mean any harm by anything. I was, I was just going to leave town and every... Nobody would have known the difference in the animals. They'd have been happy and... Oh, no. It's a fraud. It's forgery. It's crooked. And in a couple of hours, everybody's going to know about it. Huh? Well, maybe old man Lacey didn't write a will, but they sure have copies of his handwriting. And when they check that will, well, in a couple of hours, you're liable to be in jail. Things will be worse off than they were before. Yeah, for the animals, too. Oh, no. Wait. Boys, boys, don't be angry with me. I... I just didn't know what else to do. Listen, Joe, our only chance is to tell Mr. Binks the truth. I mean, get Dad to plead with him and the court and everybody and... Yeah. Tell him before they find out the will is phony. Listen, I'll go call Dad before he leaves for the office. Stay here. I better do it. No, no wait, boys. Wait. Let go. Uh, but we ought to talk about this thing first. We... Mister, we've got to be honest about this. But if we only waited a while, maybe... But boys, boys, you just can't tell him I wrote that will. Let go, I said. Now, please, please. If... Go on, it's all right. All right, all right, all right. Let me go. I won't do anything. I guess you've done enough already. My, but you're strong, aren't you? <laughs> you're skinny, but whoo, strong. <laughs> no, you don't. Let me... Frank! Come on, hurry up! Uh, just a second, Eric. Uh, no, I want to talk to Dad. Uh, just a second. What's the matter? Look, Eric's already checked into it. Now he's back to see Dad. You mean he's already checked the will? The handwriting? This morning? There was no question about it. It was easy. Are you sore? No, and that's the cockeyed part about it. Frank, there was no question but what Lazy wrote it. Huh? No, no, you're mixed up. Frank, listen, it was Lacey's handwriting. But that's impossible. Lacey died over... over a month ago. Well, I... I told you to call me a ghost, didn't I? Is there anything wrong with being a, 
real ghost? That's what I said. Would you like to pinch me or something? Mister, this is no time for silly games. Hey, watch out for that phone, stupid. Eric will hear you. He's still on it, isn't he? Listen, kid, there's a lot of things to attend to this morning. Why did you call me anyway? Uh, it's not important. We just say hello, Eric. That's all. Uh, goodbye. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you didn't tell him that Lacey's will was phony. Because, of course, it isn't really phony. You wrote that will last night. You just said you did. Hey, but it's not phony if it's not a forgery now, is it? Well, you're not... Hold it. You're Lacey. Well, here's uh, his ghost, you might say. There's, There's no, no such, such thing, thing as a ghost. ghost. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm... I'm Lacey. I'm really not dead at all. Aren't you glad I'm not dead, huh? I am. Look, Mr. Lacey, can't you ever say anything a sensible way? Which would you rather be, alive or sensible? Uh, no, uh, never mind. I suppose you want to know what happened, huh? I just didn't plan on telling anyone, that's all. You heard about a timber fire or something. Yeah, that you... Died up in a forest fire up north or something, about a month ago. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, that's where I was when when I didn't die. Uh, but I was missing, and people thought I was dead, and, well, uh, just let them keep on thinking it. Why? Uh, well, uh, if people want to think something, why, it wouldn't be very nice to disappoint them, now, would it? Uh, to go around saying they was wrong and... Uh, now, look, Mr. Lacey. Uh, I'm sorry. I... I stayed dead because of the animals, of course. Why? I don't understand. Take care of all of God's creatures and they will take care of you. Somehow I... Well, I just never did very well at it. That's all. One way or another. What do you mean? Feeding them? Yeah, and keeping the barn over their heads. And... You could have done better alive than dead pretending you were dead. No, no, you see, that was the trouble. I was about to lose the farm. There were so many debts and taxes, they were going to take it away from me. They would just have hauled everything off to the glue works. Lock, stock, kit, and caboodle. Yeah, but how could your being dead help the farm? His insurance, stupid. Oh. Yeah, uh, you see, the only trouble with life insurance is it's, it's rather hard to collect. Uh, your own, that is. Boy, I bet you could get ten years in the penitentiary for that. No, 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 no. I, I didn't plan any of this. It, oh, it just happened. Here I found myself supposed to be dead, and, well, uh, well, one thing led to another, and, uh, <laughs> oh, but it worked, didn't it? <laughs> it was our will did the trick, with your fountain pen and my fancy writing. Oh, no, no, I didn't do anything crooked. No, no, of course not. But uh, there's nothing wrong if we just keep our mouths shut, huh? Is there? Yes, there is. You better forget that hour stuff, Mr. Lazy. All right, all right. Turn me in. Tell the whole world I'm alive. We don't want to get you in trouble, but... And after they haul me away, they'll send a man named Fred to haul your little friend the burrow away. Oh, yes, boys. They'll haul all the animals away. Why? Because you told, that's why. No. No, it wouldn't be our fault. Oh, yes, it would, because if, if you don't tell, I'll just sneak away somewhere, and Eric will inherit the farm, and everything will be happy ever after. But, Mr. Lacey, it, it, it's dishonest, don't you understand? If we don't talk, we can save the animals, and it isn't wrong, is it, if we just be a little bit dishonest? If something good happens because of dad always said there's no such thing as a as a little bit dishonest yeah either you are or you aren't frank look couldn't we go on letting mr lacy be a ghost i mean it wouldn't hurt anybody and you save the animals Joey! do you hear something Aren't you glad to see me? Why? Well, I brought your breakfast. 
You brought our what? Well, there's four hard-boiled eggs and six donuts. And I got two more for me without your aunt seeing. Well? Oh, yeah. Sure, thanks. We'll see you later when you get back home. Goodbye, Iola. Who are you talking to? Huh? I saw you clear from the hill by the county farm. And you were talking to somebody right there. Well, what are you talking about? He was just talking to me, that's all. Yeah, can he even talk to me? You couldn't even see us from up there, could you? Now, could you? Well, I'm sorry. You don't have to yell at me. It isn't that bad to be wrong, is it? <laughs> oh, look, she. <laughs> Why is it stupid that you can't ever learn to handle women? You know, you've been using that word stupid an awful lot these days. Could be. You know something else? No, do you? What's the matter with us? I know what it is. It's it's just not gonna work, that's all. We can't keep our mouth shut about Lacey. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's it's just plain dishonest. No wonder we're jumping all over each other. Look, we've got to tell somebody the truth. Animals are no animals. Yeah. Well, nothing's gonna happen to them for a while, at least. So, well, if worse gets to worse, we can build a barn in our backyard. Come on. It's no fun being dishonest. Makes you feel rotten inside when you do. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Lacey, but I think we'd better go into town and tell some people a few things, don't you? Well, it's, it's quite a ways off. Sure, we'll get you there all right. Yeah, my father's a nice man, and we'll tell him first about you not being a ghost, and, well, he'll do all he can to help you keep out of trouble. Go? Him? Sure. In a minute, you're gonna see a ghost riding a bicycle. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, Mr. Lacey, we gotta get going. We mean it. Well, uh, I'm warning you, boys. It's your fault if anything happens to those animals. Nothing's gonna be anybody's fault if we're all honest about it. Well, well, I might talk to your father. Maybe, uh... Oh, come on! Joe, put that down. That's my bicycle. Here, I will have some breakfast. Ought to last you all day. And besides, these sheep need somebody to herd them around the good grass, don't they? Now, don't worry, we'll be back before supper to pick you up. Come on, Mr. Lacey, let's go. I'd keep this one out and take care of him myself, is all. Used to be mine, you know. Lead him in here. I told you he said all the animals, didn't I? Well, I've got traveling to do tonight. He said? Who said? Who gave you those orders today? I thought something was going on that would take care of all these critters. I asked you to help me load them. It's none of your business who gives me my orders. Maybe somebody thinks they've been causing too much fuss by staying alive this long. <laughs> Ain't that so, little chum? <laughs> now, now, 
You just call me Fred. That's me. Fred. Next episode, I owe it to the rescue. Now the Mickey Mouse Club presents The Hardy Boys. Featuring Tim Considine and Tommy Kirk. In the mystery of Ghost Farm. Today's episode, I owe it to the rescue. All right, he's the last one. Yeah, I'll get him. He knows me a little. Come on, Billy. How far you have to drive with him, Fred? After supper? Yeah. 50 miles. Hardly enough glue and fertilizer in this bunch to make it worthwhile. Besides, I got to stop in Bayport. You know, I was just thinking. This goat here has lived on a farm ever since old Uncle Billy the man owned it. Maybe whoever told you to get rid of these animals so quick didn't mean the goat should go too, do you think? I think you better quit fishing with all them questions. Just get them on board. When old Fred hauls them off, he hauls them. Hear me? Hey, look. Hey, you! All right, tie him up. Hello. Hello. Well, he was there a minute ago, operator. Oh, all right, never mind. Couldn't you get hold of Eric? Uh, he's tearing all over town by now, I guess, making plans for that big farm he's going to inherit. I just hope they haven't given him any of my life insurance money yet. Then we'd have a really tough time keeping you out of prison. Hey, Dad. Why don't we go over to Mr. Biggs' house and wait for him to come back from his office? He's the one we have to do the most explaining to, isn't it? Sure, and if Mr. Binks isn't there, his daughter will be. I didn't mean that. Ha, well, listen, Dad. The animals are the most important thing, you know that. And even if we do keep Lacey out of jail, who's going to take care of him? If there's no money from the insurance because he's not dead, well... Hey, 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 wait a minute now. One thing at a time. You just asked me to help straighten matters out for Mr. Lacey. Well, I think the place to start is the police station, don't you? The, the, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I suppose you might as well face them first. In the meantime, you boys still have to go pick up Iola Morton, don't you? Oh, her. I forgot about her. Dad, listen. Uh, I thought Aunt Gertrude might pick her up when she comes back from downtown shopping. Well, it'll be pretty late, Joe. You better go out there yourself. Iola isn't too heavy to ride back in your handlebars, is she? Oh, of course not. Okay, then. Frank, that'll give you some time to sit here and figure out what we will do for those animals. Dad, why is it every time we get a case, you have to go running it? You've already done everything important, haven't you? You've solved the mystery, you've caught the ghost. You know, I'm pretty proud of you two guys for deciding to handle things this way. Or for persuading Mr. Lacey to. Oh, oh they did it all right. I never have known what's right and what's wrong. Listen. But if those poor animals have to pay for it, telephone. Might be Mr. Banks. I'll get it. Oh, answer the phone, will you stupid, stupid? Oh. I'll get it. Hello? to the farm for Iola. Well, we'll do something for that farm of yours, and for the animals, too. But there's plenty of time for that. Plenty of time for everything, eh, boys? All I'm stopping in town for is to check with that guy at the zoo about a walrus. Now, never mind. Of course I'm not going to drive into the zoo. 
or any place else in Bayport if you don't want me to. After all, you're paying me, aren't you? And quit worrying. There's nobody going to interfere. Nobody even going to see me. Hey! Hey, you Snoopy kid! about kids anyway. Zoo coming to see me, Fred? That's right, Mr. Bray. Thought you might like me to haul off that sick walrus for you. No. No, I just came around the corner to see the vet here about him. In fact, I... I got plenty of room. No sense hanging on to a sick animal. You know that. Hmm? What's the matter? Oh, just somebody I know. So, uh, you're on a business trip, eh? Fred sounds like farm animals. That batch of skeletons from old Lacey's place, remember? Mm-hmm. Finally said haul them away. Huh? Who said haul them away? Why... Lacey's animals? That's right. They're the ones, that same kid, the, the Hardy Boys. Hey, wait a minute. Mr. Bray, it's none of your business, is it? Yeah, maybe not. All right, then, what are you looking for? You don't look. You haven't seen any animals in my truck, have you? Yeah, uh, maybe not. Now, how about it? Suppose I just make room for that walrus, huh? You can't have that walrus, but uh, how about a, a, a soda? Huh? Oh, come on, I'll buy you a cold drink. Come on. Uh, you seem mighty confused, uh, Mr. Bray. Uh, is anything wrong? Uh, no. Yeah, I sure could use some blubber this trip. Yeah, so could I. Blubber? Uh, uh, soda, soda. Come on, I'll, I'll, I'll buy you. Come on, come on. Oh, come on. Joe, they're going to kill him. They're going to kill all of them. Come on, help me untie the rest of the animals. <laughs> to do. I called you, you wouldn't even answer me. Joe, somebody told me to hurry up and get rid of the animal. Who did? I don't know. But you know, I sure wish I knew what was going on about them lacy animals. Huh? Well, they don't have them pretty ivory tusks. The gate's stuck. I can't move it. Will you help me? Get out of the way. Move.
you say you were taking them animals, Fred? Come on now. Take it easy. Everybody's gonna hurt you. Hey, what happened? How'd he get here? Same way the horse got loose from the 10 cent store, I'm afraid. A what? What? Well, it's their own fault if they leave their stores open after closing time. Hey, Joe, why didn't you call me? Well, we tried to get a hold of you, Frank and the policeman and everybody. Police? You mean all the animals are loose? Eric, listen, you were our client, weren't you? I mean, we helped you get your farm and everything. Or we would have if Lacey hadn't have been alive instead of dead. Huh? Hey, Joe, wait a minute. But now you'll help us, won't you? Joe, what's happened? How did all animals get loose? I turned them loose. What do you think? Look out! So now you want me to help you, huh? You're attracting people's attention, Daddy. Well, of course I am. That's what I shouted at him for. Yes, sir. I'm right here, sir. I mean other people's attention. Well, Dad says as soon as we get all the animals rounded up, he'll explain... You be quiet, too. It's those animals that have been causing the trouble all these past ten years. Well, Lacey just didn't want him to be killed, that's all. Oh, Mr. Lacey is a several-headed idiot, and you boys have now joined the club. Really, Father? Just because we like animals... Do you have any idea how much all this is going to cost you? How much it'll cost your father? How much it's cost me already, loaning Lacey money to keep that blasted farm going, going? Mr. Binks, all you're thinking about is money. Huh? Well, of course I am. Yeah, and I'll bet you think the animals are a nuisance. That's why you tried to get rid of them today, isn't it? What? Well, what did I do? I'll bet you're the one who got a hold of the man named Fred. And you told him to bring his truck and haul off the animals to be killed. So if we're in trouble trying to rescue him, it's partly your fault, Mr. Binks. Oh, Daddy, you didn't. You think I... Do you actually think I'm the kind of heartless person who... Where's your father? You'll find out what trouble is, young man. Yes, sir, he's right inside, but look out for the... Get out of my way. Come on. Here I am. I've got a nice carrot for you. Oh, there you are. Now, now, I won't hurt you. Just hold still. Nice little donkey. Nice little mule. You have a carrot, madam, for me? Oh, Silas, you scared the life out of me. Why? Oh! This is my property, isn't it? Why shouldn't I be here? Well, well yes, of course. I, I, I just meant... Oh, Silas, you remember me. I'm Gertrude Hardy. Now, let's get this clear, Gertrude. Am I to understand that you have some sort of rendezvous with a mule? Oh, no, of course not. It's a burl. That's the word. I'm looking for a burl, that's all. Oh, you are. Well, for the boys, I mean. It's their burl, not mine. It's for one of their mystery cases, you know. Oh, Silas, don't just keep looking at me. You remember how excited everybody got last year when the boys were trying to find your doubloons for you? <laughs> yes, and you acted pretty silly yourself sometimes then, too. Oh, is that so? What's that for? What is this? What is this? Oh, Gertrude, those wonderful boys of yours, those wonderful, wonderful boys. I'll never forget. There was so much treasure, I landscaped my entire place. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just out watering this evening when I heard you. <laughs> oh, this, oh, this, oh, I just used this old cutlass to turn on the sprinklers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, let's get this clear, Gertrude. What's all this incredible nonsense about? Oh, there you are. Come along. A burrow? Will you excuse us, please? <laughs> Oh, those hardies, they haven't changed a bit. 
Neither have I. All right. Tell them to send the bill to the Hardys. Chief, it isn't the Hardys' fault. It's my fault. Everything's my fault, now, Chief. Now, just sit down, Mr. Lacey. Take it easy. I want to see how they're making out at the zoo now. Maybe Mr. Bray's having better luck than we are rounding up these blasted critters. Oh, he's been so nice to help. Everyone's been so nice. Uh, maybe if you just locked me up for the rest of my life. Uh, Hello. Oh, yes, yes, operator. Put her on. It's a lady at the Bayport Theater. Says there's a cow there with her head stuck in the ticket window. Oh, no. Oh, no. They... You come back here, young man. Yes? I'm sorry, sir. I, I just... I can handle my own boys, Mr. Binks. Oh, is that so? I only thought I'd better get back out to help Joe, Dad. Well, it's this plain detective that's done it. If your boys hadn't interfered, Mr. Hardy... If my boys hadn't interfered, Mr. Binks, there might have been a lot worse trouble than there is now. As for any damage being done tonight, don't worry, we'll pay for it. All of it. Now get out. Oh, no, you don't. I'll pay my share. You can't get rid of me that easy. I like animals just as well as you do. I guess if I'm going to pay the bills for Lacey's and everybody else's mistakes, well, I, I, I ought to be allowed to criticize. Uh, yes, yes, I'm here, lady. Well, speak louder. What's that? Well, let me talk to the policeman. Young man. If you ever again go snooping around a farm that's got a ghost on it, I'll... I'll... What? <sighs> Broke one of his headlamps. Stuck a hoof clear through it, eh, Sergeant? Oh, no. The goat? Another sheep. I don't blame you for being sore, Mr. Binks. Things sure are messed up. All right, Buttercup, come on. Let's get in. Go to bed. Well, at least she won't get shot. <laughs> Look at here. She had a load ticket stuck in her hauler. <laughs> but if we're going to find that burrow, I better get going again. You know, it's lucky for you we had a few empty pens around. Hey, look. Frank brought the horse over. You want to put him in one of those cages too, Mr. Bray? Yeah. You're going to keep all the animals here for the night at least, aren't you? Put him in the pen there with the sheep. And uh, you be careful with these. Leave them on the porch, huh? Hey, wait a minute. We'll go back downtown with you. Hmm? No, no, no. It's almost midnight, and we only got a couple of pigs in that burrow to find anyhow. Besides, this guy burson has been waiting two hours to take you home, Joe. Yeah, and I'm still awake, too. Come on, let's go. Well, I'll take another good trip around town in the truck, so just don't worry. Well, I'll go with you. We can't stop until we know the burrow's safe. Yes, we can. Good night, Mr. Bray. Something I want to show you. Hmm? Oh. I found a guy close to that goat. There's something on this bell. What is it? Well, there's some kind of writing. It says, take care of God's creatures, and I'll take care of you. Hey, just like in the house? Yeah, and that's not all. <laughs> it's kind of a laugh now, though, isn't it? Everybody's sure taken care of, all right. Frank, listen. Maybe it doesn't mean anything. But suppose there is a mystery out there at the farm, like Lacey said. Suppose... Hey, what's all this? Hey, now look, boys, if you're going to start playing detective all over again at this late date, you're going to get in trouble with me. Well, we have to do something, don't we? Now, look, you've done too much already. Oh, is that so? You've been talking like that all evening. What's the matter with you? I bet if that guy named Fred hadn't have disappeared when the animals got loose, we could have made him prove there was a mystery. Because, don't you forget, somebody told him to get rid of those animals in a hurry and... Hey, 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 relax. Fred just went home, that's all. He lives outside of town. He said to heck with it. He's afraid of getting in trouble, maybe. So you were there when the police got him on the phone? I guess you're right. Yeah, well, look, I talked to this Fred for a minute, and I asked him why he was hauling the animals in the first place. And he said, well, nobody told him to. There was just some sort of mix-up in the orders, that's all. Yeah, I guess so. So there you are. No villains to catch. Nobody to blame for all this trouble but Lacey and yourself. <sighs> Well, I'm going to show both you guys that goat. There's something on his bell. What? Hey, Joe, come back here. Oh, for the love of Mike, stop him, will you? What nuisance can those animals be? You know something, Merrick? My brother's so stupid and stubborn at times that he's smart. Here, Billy. I hear you, boy. I'm coming. Where the heck are you? Hey, turn it off. How can a guy hear a goat with a...
with a foghorn like you going on. Do that again. Hey, Joe! Hey, Billy. Maybe I can't prove it, but if there was some mystery about the farm like Lacey always thought there was, some secret of old Uncle Billy's, maybe, well, Joe might be getting close to it right now. Listen here, kid, get this straight. If I did anything wrong, you'll never be able to prove it. And old Lacey's too stupid to even remember. I'm not afraid of you. Listen, Eric, what about that Fred business? Did you hire him to get rid of the animals? Kid, please, for the love of heaven, run for help! Frank, cut it out. This is no time for deductions. Oh, isn't it? He says I can't prove anything. Well, we've had lots of clues, you know. Like every time he'd go into the old farmhouse, he just never seemed to see Lacey, remember? Even when he'd go into the rooms where he was. So he must have just pretended. He must have known Lacey wasn't dead all the time. Sure, all right, anything. Get help, I told you. Well, how about it, Eric? Yes. Yes, I hired Fred. Of course I knew Lacey was alive. I'm the one who gave him the whole idea of playing dead. You don't think he was smart enough to think of collecting his own insurance, do you? Well, all right. I did everything. Only get help. Hey, what is this? Hey, help! Hurry! Help! Mr. Bray, your lion got loose. Yeah, so I see. Thank heaven you're back. Hurry, get him away from me! Wait a minute. Eric's just been telling us some of the things that he did. He's the one who hired Fred and tried to get Lacey's farm. The one who thought animals were just a nuisance. All right, all right! How many times do I have to admit it? Oh, a confession, huh? Oh, Bray, don't just stand there! Do something! Yeah, no matter what kind of a guy he is, it does seem kind of cruel to just let a lion... Joey! Joey, it's me, Iola! Joe, look, I found her! Isn't that wonderful? Come on, beautiful. Oh, no, no! Get out! Get out of here! what you did. You let her scare him. What? She saved me. She saved my life. Didn't you see her? Now, just take it easy, everybody. George won't hurt you. He just likes to be petted, that's all. Frank knows about him. He knows how tame he is. George! George, come back here. So, uh, George is tame, huh? Why didn't you tell me? Well, 
We got a confession out of Eric with him, didn't we? Well, at least you might have told me. Well, you didn't ask me, stupid. Listen, one of these... Coach Bell, I forgot about it. I forgot to show it to you. What's that? Well, the goat's been wearing this bell around his neck. Only he got knocked off when he ran into George. Did he scare the lion, too? Hey, wait a minute. There goes Eric. <laughs> curious about it myself. Let me see it. Now, what is it? What's this all about? Take care of all of God's creatures, and they will take care of you. Yeah, yeah, I can read. So, just like out of the farm. Only, well, look at the thing there, that carpet that makes a noise. Well, I noticed it's shaped like a key. What? Here, give me that. You keep your hands off. A key? Hey, Joe, I think you're right. It's kind of flat, but it does have cuts in it. Let me see. Of course it's a key. The kind of key they give you in the bank. Oh, no. That was in front of me all the time. There they are, Mr. Hardy. Liberty bonds. That's right. Quite a few of them. They must have been there for years and years. The safe deposit's all paid up. Just forgotten. But whose are they? Well, they belong to Lacey's brother, old Uncle Willie. See here, they're all in his name. Hmm. Well, what are Liberty bonds? Well, look for yourself, son. They're the kind of government bonds that used to be a long time ago. Each one must be worth well over $100 by now. Each one? No! But then that's the mystery of the farm. Yeah, that's why Eric wanted the farm, and that's why he wanted to get rid of Lacey. Somehow, Eric must have known about these. Lacey didn't, but he did. He didn't know where, but... That's right, boys. Eric wanted a chance to look for these. And with Lacey legally dead, he would have owned them when he found them. And all the time, poor old Lacey thought that his playing ghost would just help the animals. Listen, Dad, who gets these now? Well, well as I understand Lacey. Regular inheritance. He was the next heir in line. Will and all. And that farm sure going to need some fixing. Will you hold still? Well, there we are. Room and board three. Well, I could have said for animals, but who's going to read it anyway? Here they are. Look at all you done, huh? I don't see why I should be treated so nice after all I did, trying to swindle insurance and all. You didn't really swindle anybody, Mr. Lacey. I don't think even Eric finished anything that was really crooked. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks to a couple of boys I know. <laughs> well, it's, it's easier to stop a crime before it happens than to go shooting up people afterwards. I think even Eric learned his lesson all right, Mr. Lacey. Mm -hmm. uh, guess I mean the money mostly. It seems like all those bonds, <laughs> they shouldn't belong to me. Well, if you use them to take care of all the stray animals in the world for the rest of their lives... Oh, don't you worry, ma'am. Uh, that's all I wanted in the first place. Just what I got. <laughs> well, look! Welcome home! Well, look at all those ribbons. Oh. <laughs> That's the burrow that saved my life, Miss Hardy. Gee, I wish I could take care of them. I like animals better than anybody. I wish I could take care of all the animals in all the world. Don't you, Frank? Don't you, Joe? <laughs> well, I'm sort of, sort of a mystery man myself. Oh. Well, there's other things in life. I mean, being a detective. Now. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's it. It's sure all over now. Bitter end. Hey, 